Now from the Columbia Basin, your local news source, this is iFiber One News, presented in high definition. The number one source for real-time local news, local sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. With your iFiber One News team, reporting news in real time as it's happening. From the iFiber Communications HD broadcast studio in Ephrata, Washington, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Welcome to i Fiber One News. I'm Alan Troop, reporting news from around the Columbia Basin for Monday, December 23rd. Tonight, we report on a man that fell from Pinto Dam at the south end of Billy Clap Lake and how people in Ephrata are going to be paying more. In sports, Bob Kirkpatrick reports on how the Columbia Basin teams did on the hardwoods. And our spotlight story tonight is about a sanctuary for abused and neglected animals in Moses Lake. And we have the latest weather forecast for the Columbia Basin from the I-501 Weather Center. Our top story tonight, a man fell from Pinto Dam at Billy Clap Lake early this morning and was taken to Samaritan Hospital with life-threatening injuries. A U.S. Bureau of Reclamation employee was checking the dam and slipped on ice at about 8.20 a.m., according to a Grant County Sheriff's Office spokesman. The man fell about 35 feet and landed on concrete. He was rescued by EMTs from Grant County Fire District 12 and taken to the hospital. His name will not be released until after his family is notified of the accident. Ephrata residents will have to pay more to the city. The city council approved a 1.6% increase for the majority of its fees and fines. The city started using the consumer price index to increase rates three years ago as a way for the rates to keep up with inflation. City Administrator Wes Crago said three sets of fees are increasing at a larger amount. The city increased water rates by 5.6% because of a plan to improve the city's water system. Sewer rates were increased by $6.50 plus 1.6% to pay for improvements. The third increase is because the city switched from an annual dog license requirement to one license for the life of the animal. The cost went up to $10 for spayed or neutered dogs and to $30 for dogs that aren't spayed or neutered. Two people are now arrested for the attempted murder of a Moses Lake man, Dale Olmos, on December 11th. Both Jordan Weister, a 21-year-old Moses Lake man, and Jose Rivera, a 16-year-old Moses Lake teen, were charged in Grant County Superior Court with attempted murder in the first degree and had their bails set at $1 million. The two were reportedly involved with shooting Olmos in this head and leaving him in a field over an allegation of a stolen cell phone. Rivera is being charged as an adult and faces a second charge of attempted murder in the second degree. The third person is still being sought by the Grant County Sheriff's Office. They are looking for Gilbert Williamson, a 46-year-old Moses Lake man. He is described as being a Caucasian, standing six feet tall, weighing about 220 pounds, with hazel eyes and short brown hair. The Sheriff's Office asked anyone with information about the shooting or the location of Rivera or Williamson to call 509-762-1160. Information can also be sent by email to crimetips at co.grant.wa.us. People providing tips can remain anonymous. Each of the people you see here has warrants for their arrest and is wanted by various law enforcement agencies. If you see any of these people, the DOC asks that you not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but to call police. You can also call the Department of Corrections at 509-764-6180 during the day or 509-762-1160 after 5 p.m. We will be back after these messages with the latest from our i Fiber One Weather Center, sports and more news. Are you looking to improve your or your child's smile? At Casciati Orthodontics, we make it our mission to make braces more affordable and fun. Our business has proudly served the Columbia Basin for over 20 years, and our new conveniently located state-of-the-art facility offers a relaxing environment full of fun activities for the kids. We accept all types of insurance and have convenient payment plans available. 
Give us a call for a complimentary evaluation, no referral needed. Or check us out on the web and make an appointment online. If it's metal, we buy it at J&K Recycling, from junk cars to farm equipment and everything in between. We are looking to buy industrial and construction equipment, iron and steel, copper, brass or aluminum. We buy scrap metal of any kind. We can come to you to clean up your junk so you don't have to. Give J&K Recycling a call today. Remember, if it's metal, we buy it. Hi there, everybody. Meteorologist Don Morello with you here on iFiber Channel 1 News, your weather forecast through our upcoming Christmas Eve and Christmas holiday, of course. Brought to you by Bud Cleary Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Well, Mother Nature is treating us to a little bit of a quiet weather pattern for the next couple of days. Opportunity of a little bit of breeze, though, the next 12 to 24 hours, making it feel a little cooler than what the thermometer says, but seasonal temperatures nonetheless. Could also be maybe with some of that ice fog that uh, we've had to deal with earlier today as well. But really, no major winter storm is on tap, and there will be a few periods of cloudiness on tap, but generally very nice weather for the next couple of days. So here we go, taking a look at the past 24 hours after morning low of 22, high of 39. It took a while. Boy, it was kind of gray and icy at times with the fog, uh, but generally we'll see some brightening skies late in the afternoon. And we are looking for a nice night tonight with the clearing skies. 39 degrees, 22, the extremes in Moses Lake. And much of the day it was right at or below freezing before we broke it on out and had two hundredths of an inch of precipitation. A little slippery in some spots during the first half of today. But right now we are looking at a fairly decent night settling on in. The clouds have been thinning during the afternoon and evening. They'll continue to do so overnight tonight. 25 degrees is the dew point though, so as we get close to the, say, 2, 3, 4, 5 a.m. time frame, we might see a few patches of fog and ice fog again developing. But you can see as we put the clouds into motion how we started cloudy, but then during the afternoon some breaks developed, and again, we're in that shadow effect. Anytime you get winds aloft coming from west to east, again, right after the mountains, things dry out and we get that shadow effect. And that's what had happened late this afternoon. And we'll see that nice Tuesday, Christmas Eve day. Clouds develop, though, Christmas Eve night into Christmas morning. So we might see a little bit of cloud cover to wake up to on our Christmas day. There you go there. Uh, but all in all, no major precipitation event. Most of the heavier precipitation getting pushed well off to our north and west. Here we go with the state forecast. Generally into the 40s for the daytime high. A little bit of cloud cover and snow shower activity in the far eastern hills of the inland northwest here in the Columbia Basin, generally in the mid-30s, and that's just about where we should be this time of the year, if not a little bit above normal. And here we go, taking a look at the forecast. Again, Old St. Nick coming into the area overnight to tomorrow night, Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. A few icy spots to wake up to Christmas morning, so be aware of that heading out early. But things should clear on nice. And look at this pattern. No major issues. Maybe some flurries by the weekend, but all in all, looking pretty good. Again, your forecast was brought to you by Bud Cleary Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome to Toyota Thon. How can I help? I love Toyota Thon. It's the only time I ever buy a car. Smart. 35 years of amazing deals. Yep. I remember buying my first Toyota here. Yes. My first new car. I'm adorable. Join the Prius family right now for only $1.99 a month with a new 2013 Prius C-Lease. And receive Toyota Care Plus, an additional year of no-cost maintenance. Toyota, let's go places. Did you know that Little Chief's Child Care is expanding their Juniper Street location? This great new place across from Moses Lake Clinic is designed just for preschool and school-aged children. For over eight years, Little Chief's kids like me have found the love and attention every child needs to be healthy and happy. The grown-ups there have gone to college so they know how to make sure kids from 1 month to 12 years old have a great place to learn and play. Come join our growing Little Chief's tribe. Welcome back. I'm Bob Kirkpatrick with today's local sports. The Moses Lake boys basketball team picked up a big win over Davis on the Chiefs' home court Friday night. It was an exciting night of Big Nine basketball, to say the least, for the Moses Lake faithful. Mitch Homan's three-point bucket to start the game ignited a 10-4 run, and the Chiefs never looked back as Moses Lake dominated play in an 83-60 win over the Pirates. The Chiefs jumped out to an 18-5 lead at the end of the first quarter and were up 36-26 at the break. 
Moses Lake continued to roll in the second half of play as the Chiefs outscored Davis 47-35 in the final 16 minutes of the contest. Moses Lake's Cesar Sandoval led all scores with 20 points. Ricardo Gonzalez added 13, and Derek Martinez finished with 12 in the win. The girls' team was out to avenge last year's district championship loss to Davis on the Chiefs' home court. The poor shooting and missed free throws were the downfall for Moses Lake as the Pirates pulled out a come-from-behind win, 54-52. The Chiefs jumped out to a 10-4 lead but trailed 25-23 at intermission. Moses Lake outscored Davis 20-13 in the third quarter to go up 43-38. The Pirates answered back with a 15-9 fourth quarter run to escape with a two-point victory. McKenna Walker had 15 points and Jesse Loretta finished with 14 in the loss. The Chiefs hit the road to Sunnyside Saturday and dropped both games to the Grizzlies. The split over the weekend moves the boys' teams to 2-2 two and two in Big Nine League play and 4-2 and two overall. The two losses for the girls drops the Chiefs to 2-2 two and two in conference play and 4-3 and three overall. Moses Lake is back on the hardwood Saturday when the team heads to Pasco for non-league games against the Bulldogs. Lloyd Burleson knocked down 15 points, Jacob Laird added 11, and Riley Fezzen and Dylan Betham finished with 10 each, and the Afraid of Tigers picked up a huge 59-47 road win over Ellensburg Friday. Afraida turned an early 10-5 deficit into a 10-point halftime lead and then held off a late rally by the Bulldogs to come away with the win. The victory improves the Tigers to 2-2 two two in Central Washington Athletic Conference play and 4-2 and overall. Afraida is out of action over the Christmas break but returns to the court for a road game at Wapato January the 3rd. The Lady Tigers dropped their, games to the Bull their game to the Bulldogs 62-25 to fall to 1-3 in league play and 2-4 and overall. Well, three players scored in double figures to lead Soap Lake to a 66-24 home win over Wilson Creek Friday. Nick Capallo scored 20 of his game-high 22 points in the first half. Dima Kalachek drained 20, and Bo Nielsen added 10 points and 15 rebounds for the high-flying Eagles. The win improved Soap Lake to 2-0 in Central Washington 1B action and 5-1 overall. The Lady Eagles dominated the Devils 51-6 behind 18 points from Nellie Kornichuk and 12 from Evelyn Lopez to move Soap Lake to 1-1 one one in league play and 2-4 and overall. Soap Lake is back in action January 3rd for a road game at Waterville. The Moses Lake Christian Academy boys dropped their game to Columbia Basin Secondary School 51-32 Friday to drop to 2-1 and one in Central Washington 1B action and 2-2 two and two overall. The Lady Lions destroyed the Lady Phoenix 82-9 to move to 2-0 in league play and 5-1 and overall. Moses Lake Christian Academy is back in action Friday when the Lions host their annual Christmas tournament. Moses Lake Christian takes on Warden in first round action. The girls game gets underway at 6 p.m. Jessica Sorensen scored a three game total 42 points and pulled down 33 boards to lead the Big Bend Lady Vikings to a second place finish at the Bellevue Crossover Tournament that concluded Sunday. The 8 and 3 Lady Vikings are back in action Saturday for the Skagit Valley Winter Classic in Mount Vernon. And the Running Vikes place fourth at the Everett Crossover Tournament this weekend. Big Ben dropped its opening game to undefeated Clark College 79-72 Friday, beat defending NWAC champion Chemeketa 94-87 Saturday, and picked up a 104-94 win over host Everett Sunday. The running Vikes at 9-2 on the season host the Big Ben Holiday Classic this weekend. Big Ben opens against Capilano at 7 p.m. Friday. i 5 or one Sports will be broadcasting the game live. Well, that's it for sports. We'll be right back after this. Are you worried that your home might not meet today's safety standards? Eastern Washington Home Inspection standards for home safety are among the highest in the industry. We provide the highest level of inspection service and provide a detailed report with digital photos of any structural damage or other problems that might make your home unsafe. Our head inspector, Dennis Chamberlain, along with his son, Cody, are fully qualified inspectors who make your safety their priority. We inspect for your peace of mind. Call us at 509-347-6425. At High Mountain Hunting Supply, we have a saying that guides us. If we won't use it in the field, we won't sell it in the store. We take that seriously. Every gun, every rod, every bow that we sell is a product you can feel confident will help you land the biggest fish or harvest the biggest game. Our experts will help you find the right product for your needs. 
Come see us at 12238 North Frontage Road in Moses Lake or 223 North Mission in Wenatchee. High Mountain Hunting Supply, your source for hunting and fishing. Our spotlight story tonight is about the days of Camelot. No, not the time of swords and King Arthur, but a place where abused and neglected animals can find sanctuary. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. When abused, elderly, malnourished, disabled, or neglected animals come to Days of Camelot Animal Sanctuary in Moses Lake, they are coming home. So say Dale and Sandy Casebolt, who founded the five-acre nonprofit Animal Sanctuary in 1997. The case bolts have rescued animals including dogs, cats, horses, llamas, alpacas, farm birds, even wild birds. Their rescued menagerie includes a dog used as bait in illegal dog fights, animals with broken bones or other severe injuries inflicted by their abusive owners, and horses and other pets left to starve. They've rescued pets from as far away as China, across the U.S., and around Washington. Dale Casebolt talked about the sanctuary's history. How it started was uh, I was coming home from work one night and I seen a kitten in a pothole and it was 11 o'clock at night and I picked her up, brought her home and then the next night a uh, chihuahua in the same spot. Uh, it just started from there. You know, we, we felt that uh, there was a lot of animals that needed someone there uh, for their final days, somebody that was so they wouldn't be alone. And uh, with our love to the animals anyway, well, I was raised on a ranch in, in Montana. And uh, she raised llamas when I met her. And it just grew from there. The case bolts were at their booth Saturday in front of Moses Lake's Walmart. There, once a month, they share information about the sanctuary and accept donations of cash, cleaning products, and pet food. They are reluctant to give the location of their home because unwelcome people have been known to dump unwanted pets there. Sandy Casebolt says she will never get used to the cruelty she, Dale, and others have witnessed. We see some very extreme situations. Um, we're not always able to save them when they come to us. Um, we get some that are so emaciated uh, that um, we have had a couple that we haven't been able to save. And he told the sad story of their pug, Amelia, one such case of abuse the Kates both see all too often. She had lived underneath a staircase for six years of her life. Um, and that was where she lived, where she ate, where she pooped. Um, they bred her and she had puppies so that they could sell her puppies. Also with the case bolts was Juno, a deaf and blind Sheltie who was born without eyes, disabilities that failed to keep the dog from showing the love. Donations to the sanctuary can be made to Pioneer Veterinary Clinic, 827 Sharon Avenue in Moses Lake. Call 509-765-6794. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. We will be right back after this. When you find out about the DQ five buck lunch, all this food for only five bucks, you gotta tell people about it. So I situated nice. Frosty drink next to this juicy grilled burger and fries. Get my Sunday, mm, boom. I just dropped a five buck lunch of grandma on all my friends. Get ready for a little five buck indie. Michael, we like your style. The five buck lunch, entree, fries, drink, plus a sundae. Only at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. A massage at Not Release Therapies is far more than mere luxury. We strive to improve your health and well being in the process. The stress of everyday life adds up and can cause depression, even bodily harm. That's why our professionals make it their mission to rejuvenate your body and mind. Enjoy the benefits of body wraps, sunless airbrush tanning, aroma steam therapy, and much more. In our opinion, everyone deserves a day of relaxation and peace of mind. Not Release Therapies in Moses Lake, where relaxation means good health. In Northwest news, a $3 billion tunnel project for Seattle is on hold after a humongous drill was stopped in its tracks. CNN's Stephanie Elam looks into the mystery of what's blocking the path. No doubt, Bertha is a behemoth. At five stories tall, she's billed as the largest diameter tunneling machine in the world. And she was put to work grinding a tunnel under Seattle for a planned highway. 
But Bertha was only a tenth of the way on her nearly two mile journey when she suddenly encounters something large enough and strong enough to stop her in her tracks. We're being really cautious, want to make sure that we don't damage this uh, $80 million machine. But what is it? The mystery is fueling lots of speculation. Geologists point to how Seattle's watery edges were filled in with just about anything by the city's pioneers. You find old shoes, newspapers, there's a boat buried in downtown Seattle, so you name it, it could be down there. Another theory is it's a massive boulder left during the Ice Age. Residents have their own guesses. Some kind of burial ground, maybe? Oh, yeah, she's taking a Christmas break, you know what I'm saying? Merry Christmas, Big Bertha, you know what I'm saying? If that's the case, Bertha's Christmas break started two weeks ago. Since then, the $3 billion tunnel project has been on hold as workers drill wells to alleviate water pressure in front of Bertha in hopes of sending workers to the front of the drill to see what she's up against. You can't back the machine up because you've got the segmental lining behind you, so. All you can really do is uh, proceed forward. But the Transportation Department says Bertha won't be moving forward until at least early next year, after the mystery is solved. Stephanie Elam, CNN, Los Angeles. It may be pure luck, but a pair of glasses may have saved the life of one Seattle girl. A pair of eyeglasses is credited with saving the life of a teenage girl in Seattle. 16-year-old Alonza Bryant had a bullet lodged in the bridge of her nose, but she says it could have been worse. The teen was asleep on the couch Saturday night when, according to the police, subjects drove by the family's home and opened fire. Bryant says she had forgotten to take off her glasses when she went to sleep. If I didn't have my glasses on, I wouldn't be here. Glasses saved her life. Yes, I, I believe that, and I thank God for that. And that's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.